morning Pipianos. It is a very cold day, the beanie is out. But there's a, and they, I've literally got whip, whip, whip. And we are selling that by the way. Yeah, it is for sale, I've had so many people want it. Um, yeah, don't know why I'm talking about that. Anyway, the S13 is home, the S13 is home. Here is the S13. So, we took it for a drive last week and we realized that the brake light isn't working like at all. Uh, there's two lights that are constantly on as soon as the battery's on. So we need to figure out the brake lights because I can't be driving around without any brake lights. So we need to figure out why the brake lights aren't working. We also need to figure out which ones are wired on a constant life. It doesn't make sense because that's the only thing really stopping the car from driving. Now you've noticed the it hasn't, hasn't got a bumper at the minute. Uh, and that's just because the bumper, the black one, the BN one, that's getting uh, repaired and the white one's still at Rusty's. Just thought, bring it home with that bumper because we've still got the pig nose one, the original pig nose one. I actually can't believe how many people want this bumper. Like, these bumpers are rare as rocking or shit. Don't know why, it's an absolute, it's shit. But only if it's an OEM one, I don't know if it's an OEM. Apparently, it shouldn't be a rubber lip, but this is like a, well, I think it's like, a, I don't know. I don't really know if it's real or not. But for the time being, we're going to put that back on. But first of all, we need to fix these brake lights because I can't really drive it without brake lights because I can't really get any more points. We're going to put the side skirts back on, put the pump bumper back on and fix them brake lights. Did I tell you that? Okay, so we're on the GoPro for mobility things. Let me just get you in the boot and we'll show you what's going on. As soon as I disconnect, well, as soon as I connect the battery... <laughs> get wrecked. Uh... These two main lights are on. Now they're quite bright for a tail light. That, that to me says that they're a brake light, but the brake lights once did work and it was these were the brake lights. But here's where it gets confusing, right? So obviously like, you know, we've got uh, something here and yeah, it's a 38, it's a 380 bulb, single filament, that could be a brake light. Let's come to the other side. Ah, so maybe that isn't the brake light. So that's gotta be the fog light. Has to be the fog light. Okay, so this is better. So the bottom one is the indicator. Now you see this is a 382 bulb. I can't remember if it's 382 or 382. It's a double filament bulb. So that is the tail light and the brake light. So what's happening is one of them is staying constantly on. The brake light is staying constantly on. So you need to figure out which one is the brake light out of those two. This looks suspicious to me, you see? So I'm gonna trace this blue wire back and see where it goes because it looks very suspicious to me. And I think, oh no, no, it doesn't actually because when we pull this off, watch this. If we just link up the battery and, and we pull this off, it still stays on. So, so yeah, that's not good. So for some reason, we need to figure out why that's permanently live and it's the brighter bulb out the two because it's a shorter filament. So we need to figure out why that's constantly on. So I'll trace this wire comes all the way through here, all the way down here. Uh, first of all, I thought it was going to a fuse box in here, but it's not. It comes up here, through here, into the wiring loom, and it crimps onto this one here. Now, what does this wire do, and why would it be live to the steering wheel? I might pull that off and just see if the lights then work on a switch. Let's try that. Okay, so we've got something. I don't know what I've done because I've just reverted it all. But now the lights aren't on automatically, so the bright lights aren't on, which is good. And also, if we turn the headlights on, now we have headlights or tail lights, sorry. So I have unplugged, oh, that's what I have done. I have unplugged the brake sensor switch. I have unplugged the brake switch from here. So let's just plug the brake switch back in and see if that comes on automatically again, because it could be wired straight to the brake switch or the brake switch should, could just be constantly on. It could just be the brake switch not working and the brake switch is just constantly on. That could be an idea actually. Let me have a go at that. Okay, so I'll plug the brake switch back in and the brakes are uh, the brakes are constantly on now. So it's something to do with the brake switch. Let's just see if the headlights come on as well as the brake switch. Yeah, both filaments are on there. So that's our issue. So the brake switch is sending constant power to the brakes so i don't know can you adjust the brake switch or is it just the brake switch is knackered so here is a brake light switch so took it off this obviously sends power to electric to the back now don't know if this is faulty or mine just maybe needs adjusting so i've pulled it out i'm going to plug the connector in and if it's 
just basically have a play with it. If, if it's staying on when I've got it in my hand, and if I'm pressing it on and off and it's staying on, then it's probably just a faulty switch in general. But let's see if we can uh, fix it. So let's plug it, plop it in. Oh no, it is, so the switch is working. So that when I push it in, it goes off. And when I push my hand out, it comes on again. So the switch is working, so we just need to figure out how to make it work. So let me get my head around this. When the switch is in, the brake lights are off. And when the switch is off, the brake lights are on. So let me just get my head around that because we're pushing the pedal down and not onto it. Okay, I'll try and explain this as best as I can. See that thread here? The brake switch threads through it. And if you look at the pedal behind, there's a hole. Now you would think that should be flat. So basically when you're off the brake, it presses against that switch. And when you press the brake, it comes off that switch and the brake lights come on. But there, there's a hole. See where my finger is here? There's a hole, so there's nothing there that is stopping that brake switch from touching because the brake switch actually just sits through that hole like that. So I don't know what's supposed to be there, but something should be there for it to make it work. So I'm gonna see if I can just fab something about that. Maybe a bolt that's like just the right size, just to knock in there so it stays in there and, and then that'll work. Okay, so I have fixed it. So if we press the brake. Okay, so brake off, brake on, brake off, brake on, brake off, brake on, brake off, brake on, brake off. Okay, so what I've done is, you might not be able to see, but I'll show you outside the car anyway what I have done. Uh, I've just put a bolt through. Um, I need to tighten the brake switch down. So, I've just put a bolt through. So you can see there, the black bolt. So, all I've done, so I put one of these bolts through the hole and not on the other side. And then where there was a hole where it was pushing around the thing, now this just presses against the switch. So we're all working, it's all good. What I need to do is uh, just, just tighten that bolt on that uh, brake pedal switch just so it's nice and tight. And then we can start fitting the bumper and stuff. But now, happy our lights work. Right, so we banged the, uh, the pig nose bumper back on. Uh, cable ties are your friend. So I was gonna put the side skirts back on, but with this, this front bumper and without our big bumper on the back, which is coming, and with these wheels, it just it just looks even worse. I think it looks just nicer without the side skirts on, to be fair. Battery is all plugged in. I've took a lot of shit out the back of the car, as you can see. I've turned down the coilovers to full soft because they were just so heavy on the, so tight on the back. Still a bit of shit in here, but it's fine. The lights are fixed. I just now need to start putting uh, everything back together from what I've, what I've stripped down down here, so all the plastics and stuff. So I'm gonna get onto that now, and then we're gonna take it for a drive. Because I need to take the battery out the MX-5 because we've got a lot of potential buyers wanting to come see it, and the battery's flat. So I need to take the battery to the office uh, and give it a charge because we need to get rid of this MX-5 because we need more money to go into this little girl. But yeah, let's, uh, let's sort all the plastics and shit Put this all back together and then let's go for a spin to the green office. Right, it's an absolute mess around here. I need to start tidying up because I want to go for a drive. Get the battery out. And it's so annoying, it's like literally in like the worst position ever. It's so frustrating. Even trying to jump this car or anything. Very annoying, but we need to get the battery out because it doesn't start. Second second drive in the car. Um I've actually found a guy in London who's selling a um Who's selling a um, what's this called? A sunroof. We found a guy who is. Oh, I actually need to uh, fix my. Um, I need to put the screen wash bottle in here as well. I might get this. I, I need. To, uh, who's got a sunroof? So it might be a good thing to go and get it. But I just don't know if he's got the hinges on it. I have looked about other things of just like welding a plate in or whatever. I spoke to a few, a couple of fabricators, fabricators, and um, not much has popped up. So if anyone's got an idea, or if anyone like works anywhere that they can just weld a bit of metal in here, um, or even over the top and just rivet in something, you know, just just let me know because I need to not have a piece of fucking wrap on the sunroof. Do you know what I mean? Right. So we're back at mine. Um, we're just going for a little bit of drive. Done, done about eight miles. Uh, that's uh, now we're gonna have to do 992. Great, can't wait. I'm gonna give the car a clean because it looks so sorry for itself and so bad. I mean, I know it looks horrific anyway, um, but it just looks even worse because it's just so dirty. 
like especially the bonnet so i don't think it's doing it any favors and it's not fair so i think we're going to give it a quick clean i think she deserves that she deserves a quick clean here we go we have my professional tool of a hose pipe there we go how are we going to dry it are we fuck who gives a shit mate does it look any better not really, no, but I mean, it was still nice to do on the last, you know. It does look really bad, I must admit. And for all you guys thinking, it, yeah, it does look shit. It does look shit. But, give us time, because it's not gonna. When the kit's here, we've got S14 hubs that are coming, which means we can go five stud wheels, which means we can get some proper aggressive wheels. And we need to drop the back, raise the front, and when the kit's on, we can get it painted. There's little bits in the car which need sorting. So it's like this bit here, you see like the, like the rust bit there, that needs sorting. I don't know what all this glue is on here, but it's coming off. Uh, we've got a little bit there which needs sorting. Um, but like most of it is covered by the body kit. The body kit comes like up here and the body kit comes around the back bumper here. The only things where the body kit don't cover is this bit. So I'm going to get this bit sorted ASAP and then we're going to get the kit on and paint the car. So I just want it to look good now. Like, I know the best thing should be get the whole rust done. Get all the rust done and then paint it, but I'll never get it done and I want it looking cool. I really just want it looking cool. So we're gonna get the kit on and paint it and do the, well, get the kit on, sort the rust bits which aren't covered, and then we can sort the rust bits which are covered later on because underneath this car is actually clean. So here we are, here's Esther Ian, she's home. And it's, yeah, look how dirty the Audi is by the way, guys. Like, it's like a whole different color. Look at it. I think it looks great. It looks like matte grey. It looks the bollocks. But I need to end this video here because I need to go and do things. I think the MX-5 is sold. We've got someone wanting to send, to send a deposit. Look how good it looks, guys. Oh my god, look how it looks. It looks so fucking good. But for now, guys, this is the end of this video. Tune for the S13. I promise you, in the next couple of months, this car is going to be looking the bollocks. I've got the S14 getting, hubs getting dropped off tomorrow. Um, which means we can start looking for some wheels. Once some sit wheels are on it, I think it's going to look sick. And I hope my body kit from Poland hurries up. And I hope the person fixing the front bumper uh, next to Rusty is quick as well. Because I need that kit on ASAP rocketing. But I love you all, guys. I hope you're excited for the S13 content. The next video, I'm probably going to be getting like a wire brush out and start doing all the rust bits and just starting the prep for the paint. Um, but for now, we love you all. And I'll see you in the next one.